So the next question is, in what ways have you built collaborative interprofessional relationships, and how has this helped your practice and your patients? And I'll start with Alana. Okay, so I think we can all agree that when you start practice, you're not going to get busy right away. Um, and I think the key point here is to use your time effectively, even though you have a ton of free time. So I, I found that that's what I would try and do. Like, in, I would really try and network and build um, my portfolio in that respect in the first little bit in, of clinic so that I wasn't playing catch up later on. Um, and I think the key is to find creative ways to build relationships. So all kidding aside, I do a ton of my networking with other healthcare professionals through Instagram. Um, I actually met, so the, the town I work in Tottenham is a very small community. Um, and there are a lot of Facebook groups too that we actually interact with a lot. Um, but I've met a, pre, a prenatal yoga instructor and, and RN through Instagram. I can't remember who messaged to first, but it was like, oh my gosh, you love coffee, I love coffee. You love pregnant women, I love pregnant women. <laughs> Let's go meet and have coffee and talk about pregnant women. And and, and that's what we did, we went to Starbucks. And, and, and that was like, even in terms of finding, aligning yourself with people that are um, helpful in practice, it's the same thing can be done with other professionals as well. So we met, we aligned great, and we thought, okay, there, we have to do something here. And that's how I created, uh, it's a prenatal yoga and learn program. So in my Tottenham practice, we have a yoga studio, and we get a, we've advertised, we've marketed, and we have a group of women come. And for the first 15 minutes, I educate. I explain to them, we have different topics, and um, all pertaining uh, to their health and their pregnancy and what happens. Um, and, and basically I explained to them, okay, why do you have low back pain in pregnancy? And we have these overarching pillars that we talk about, like why is this happening? Um, what, is, what is it and why, what can you do about it? And then for the rest of the class, she does a yoga flow related to that. And we've had such a positive response and it was a great way to get patients because some people would be like, yeah, no, I don't wanna do your program, but can I come to see you as a Cairo? And I'm like, that's fantastic. So <laughs> that was a great way to do it that I I, if you had asked me when I graduated, I'd be like, there's no way I would use Instagram to, to, to make a connection. Um, and the other thing too is that to the point of uh, healthcare providers, sometimes connections come from unlikely sources. So to keep an open mind and to really put yourself out there. So after I graduated, in that time I was doing um, the campaign, I actually took a business class with the city of Brampton. They offered it. Um, and it was a great opportunity because I met a ton of people who were in the same position that I was that were looking to grow their businesses. And I actually got a grant for my business through that. But I met uh, another young entrepreneur and she does calligraphy and logo making. And I said, well, I have a business with no logo. Can you make my logo? And then it, it kind of snowballed from there that she became a patient. Um, she referred her best friend to me. Her best friend happens to be a personal trainer. The personal trainer works at a gym. The gym owner likes me. And so then it's like, that's how you get patients. And it all started from something that w didn't even relate to healthcare, right? So to keep a very open mind um, and recognize that, you know, anyone that you meet now could be a potential resource for you. Great. Evelyn, uh, you work in an interdisciplinary space. So talk about uh, some collaborative relationships. Yeah, I... I would say that when you first think about building interprofessional relationships, it can be pretty intimidating, especially when you first graduate. You know, who am I? I I'm, you know, I'm z school. You you finished all the schooling. You're the best at school. But then you get out there and you're year zero, and shoot, what do I do? So, um, I know a lot of my classmates were doing things like cold calling. Like I, you know, Dr. Russo cold called. I don't like doing that. I was, I'm not good at it. <laughs> and uh, Or even stopping into GP's offices and talking to them, and I found that that didn't fit. I tried it a little bit, and I was sort of bad at it. Um, so again, I kind of went back to genuine interest and, and passions, and I, a couple things that I knew um, that led to my ability to now have really you know easy access to the interprofessional relations that I have now. I knew that I loved education, patient education. I knew that I loved complex care, and I... Uh, and improved patient outcomes. And again, I knew that I th thought that chiros were awesome and we had a great place in the healthcare system. So I looked for opportunities um, that had all, all of those, those components to it. Um, 
and I wasn't sure what I was looking for, and then something just sort of fell across my lap. I had two patients that were board members of this charity, Bridge to Health, uh, that I worked with, and they, there's a medical and a dental arm to this charity, and we go to East Africa, work with NGOs on the ground there, um, and their local clinical officers to treat patients, and then do patient education, and then do continued care with uh, patients on the ground there afterward. And they were talking about how the medical arm doesn't like dealing with NMSK issues and chronic pain because they felt like the, you know, medications they were prescribing wasn't effective for, you know, and after the medication was was gone. And so that was where sort of my light bulb went off. You know, here's an, here's an opportunity where I could do all those things that I love um, and then also sort of champion um, the Cairo awesome part of it. <laughs> um, so I spoke with, you know, a month later I spoke with their medical director and he said, what would you do? And I sort of made it up on the spot and I said, you know, something simple like, I don't know, let's do the McGill, you know, big three and talk about, you know, mechanical back pain and, and things like that. And they thought it was genius, right? And I'm just <laughs> thinking, okay, reiterating things from school. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but cool. <laughs> and, uh, and then I went on this trip and it was super intimidating. So, you know, there was 40 people from, mostly from the GTA, but all across Canada. And, and it was, such an invigorating experience. Like I really did work, you know, you worked on the ground with medical doctors, dentists, nurse practitioners, um, medical uh, ID docs, and and we, we had this whole preventative wing. And so it was such a great way to genuinely interact with different healthcare professionals. Um, not that I'm saying you have to go to Africa to do that, but it was, <laughs> it was such a, a genuine way to sort of experience each other's um, scopes of practice and, and work together. And I often actually joke that it was easier there than it is here. Um, <laughs> one thing, so the other part of the question was how does that, um, how did that change, you know, your practice here, your patients yeah, was, your I wasn't, style, yeah. yeah, I wasn't expecting that to change much here, but it ended up being an incredible referral source. A lot of the docs I went with, um, are from the GTA. And so all of a sudden, I had way more dentists referring to me for TMD cases, and, and I also had resources out that I could talk to about the complex care patients that we had. What do I do? Um, and that was wonderful. I'd say it also enabled further down the road my ability, my interest in doing some clinical research and, and you know, opportunities to present at public health conferences, which I wasn't expecting. Um, quick pitch, if anybody's interested in joining me in East Africa with Bridge to Health, please come talk to me during the speed mentoring. <laughs> later Great, on today. Thank you. Uh, Dwight. So collaboration is going to be a really important part of your success in practice and and uh, in my mind this is a long-term game. Right? It, you have to be strategic with how you go about putting your brand out there and, and it comes back to my original comment and that's be excellent. Like show up in your community as the expert and from there you'll get opportunity. And, and one of the ways that we try to do that in our practice is we make sure that all our patients are armed with the appropriate questions and prepared to have a conversation with other members of their healthcare team that are not in our clinic. So when they go back to their family doctor, they're letting that family doctor know, oh, I'm seeing Dr. Chapin at High Point Wellness Center. He's really helped me with my back or I'm able to do this. And so we're doing that with everybody. And when you get to know the physicians or other clinicians in your community, they're going to get used to seeing your name because you're going to be seeing some of the same patients. And other clinicians want to refer, as Evelyn was saying, a lot of their MSK stuff out the door, right? So if they know they, they can trust you, your name's going to start coming up, and that's what happens. Um, they want to know that they can trust their patient with you and that their patient's going to have a good experience and that you're going to be responsible with that relationship and with that patient care and, and report back on progress. So the, the, the cold calling and, and the active engagement and so forth, I struggled with that as well. It didn't feel authentic to me, but I will say that you've gotta get out of your comfort zone and you have to get into your community. And when you do and you project yourself as the expert, uh, even if there aren't a ton of patients waiting for you back at the clinic, um, don't let that undermine your confidence. You are the expert and bring that to the world and other clinicians will start to respond. And, and a short story on that was how I got into uh, working with the Argonauts. So the head team uh, athletic therapist in the off season uh, would sell custom knee braces. And for three or four years, 
I would work with him in the off season and he was our rep. And so we developed a relationship uh, through that experience and would work with, with patients um, as we, you know, post-operative care, whatever the case may be, and he would come in and, and, and do the neat uh, fitting for Bryce. And, uh, and then at the same time, independent of that relationship, the head sports physician for uh, Cleveland Clinic Canada was the head doc for the Argos, uh, Dr. Tim Rinlisbacher at the time. And Dr. Rinlisbacher and I co-managed cases. I was sort of his West End fix-it guy. And that relationship came out of the technique that I've shared with you. I sent a few patients back that were patients of the Cleveland Clinic that lived in the West End and that happened to come to my office. They reported the good experience that they had. There was a follow-up letter, and over time, Dr. Rinlisbacher and I developed a relationship, so there were referrals that would go back and forth. And so, all of a sudden, the Argos found themselves wanting a different leadership out of the chiropractic position, wanted a different approach to care. I got a phone call from the head trainer, said, hey, Dwight, would you like to come for dinner with, with Tim and I? We want to talk to you about the Argos. No idea what it was about. and. What little did I know that Tim and, and, and uh, Scott had discussed sort of a short list of who they wanted to bring in for the, this, this opportunity and, and they both brought my name forward because of the experiences that they had had. So I show up at this restaurant and they offered me the job and the rest is history. Two years later I'm celebrating a great cup win <laughs> in, my, in my dining room um, and have a ring to show for it. I mean it's just never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined um, that coming together and, and I didn't lobby for that. It was just based on those relationships that were that were that had come out of just just doing my thing, right? So collaboration is key, but it's a long-term game. Great. Uh, thank you. I, I think that uh, what I want to do is uh, on the collaborative effort, uh, uh, even the OCA, you know, we do collaboration in a different way. We work with health professionals in different uh, spaces that have common principles. And so Collaboration can work in the clinic setting, it can work in an administrative setting, it can work in a policy setting. And I think Dwight said one thing really important that I think I want you guys to think about is that excellence. And when you show excellence in the work you do, uh, your colleagues, whether they're chiropractors, medical specialists, will respect the work you do and see that the benefit that your work will do on their patients. And nothing goes further in terms of building that relationship is, is showing that competence.